You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaprota film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Bring in the strippers. We'll leave it. We'll we'll partake. We'll we'll eat it as we go. Uh, what the fuck is that on your? Oh, is that Sam? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna try to do. We are going to try to do a thing called a live thing, of what we normally we do on the mic thing. And so. I Was that get... supposed to bring a story? Not, yeah, but no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if everyone would please give a round of applause for Mike Boudet. Just kidding. Just kidding. He's not here. He's not here. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, so we're gonna start. Um, Kent, do you, do you did you do you have anything? No. No. <laughs> Even if he did. To be honest, when, when we got here, I thought there's no way this is going to work. And I just <laughs> didn't stopped thinking it. about it. I didn't even think yeah. we were going to do it. So No, we're doing it. And that's the weird part right now is that is that you is that we're just going to do what, what I what I have to talk about. So what I wanted to first talk about really quick. Did you know we have a really interesting time share that we want to pitch to you guys? Yeah, they're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> They're recording. We're good. <laughs> what? We have a, what? I was pitching a timeshare <laughs> in beautiful Aspen, Colorado. Yeah. All right. What do you got? First thing I wanted to talk about. Did you know what is one of the indigenous species of plant? That is really bright. When a, this went off, whose phone is this? Yeah, it just blinded me. Sorry. Mom. Do you know what is an indigenous plant of the Walt, the Walt Disney World Resort? Ooh. It rhymes with bamboo. <laughs> so, and Ken. Bamboo? Bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> Downtown, you can find that more. But Kent, how long how fast does bamboo grow? Two inches a day. Which is which, there's like a there's a phallic joke in there somewhere, but but this is a family restaurant. Oh yeah, my mom's here. Fuck. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is I have something to talk about, and then we are going to play an interactive game called it's a game called it's the game is called the game is called it's the interact part it's part nine one one. Interactive, where you interact with us, and we say some things that are related to nine one one game. <laughs> yes. And there's gonna be merch. And oh, <laughs> yeah, just to get it out of the way. So this was gonna be, we were going to try what? Yeah. So we were going to do... Also, before everybody leaves, did you bring the markers? Yeah. Is everybody that's here right now going to be here tomorrow not? Yeah. Okay, because I've kind of... I want to start this hat. <laughs> I brought this hat with me the first meetup that we did. I think I have And everybody that was at that meetup signed it. And I want to start this hat is going to be my new... I want everybody here to sign this hat whenever we... It's very. This is one of my most prized possessions. Do you want now, me to sign so. it again too? No, you don't have to sign it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> who knew he had? Yes. Who knew he had hair? You should see his back hair. It blends in very nicely with it the does. two guns on his back. Yeah, in tattoo form. Anyway, I wanted to tell you another statistic. Did you know that the the majority demographic of true crime podcast fan base is has mammary glands. 
And that's the ladies. That wasn't creepy. Ra <laughs> Raise them up if you're a lady. Your hands, your hands. Yeah. Your hands. <laughs> so I thought it would be cool because this is something. So when I say a woman's name, I want all the ladies to do what ladies do, like when you are drunk. You know the mimosas. Okay. We have blue girls in here. Because there, <laughs> because there are a handful of ladies. I thought that's what I would bring tonight for this Never Daily podcast, 50, 50, 50, because Kent's just going to sit here and... Okay, <laughs> to be, you got to sit over there and not have to drink tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I was having alcohol in my face every five seconds. You're just slamming Dr. Pepper's like fucking Forrest Gump. <laughs> well, that's partially because my mother's here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you ever want to hear a weird thing, go to a convention and every five minutes have to say, Hey, mom. <laughs> Six of us going, Hey, mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone. Yeah, she, my mom. I just said that again. It sounds weird. It shouldn't come out of my mouth. I'm 38. You are not 38. I'll be 30. You are on... so far from 38. <laughs> I'm 38 on Tuesday. <laughs> Happy birthday, twin. Thank you. You will? Okay. 38, 10 years in a row. We're the same age. My mom, my mom comes to, ah, oh, still can't get used to that. Uh, she, she meets me in the lobby today. She's like, guess what? I was just on the, the elevator and somebody said, oh my gosh, the momperator? And I was like, you're lying. <laughs> it's like, no, they said momperator. And then I thought they saw my shirt and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even see the shirt. I just recognized you. I was like, you're lying. She goes, no, there were three of them. I'm like, super lie. <laughs> and, then, and then she specified, she's like, they're from Louisiana. And I was like, this can't be. And then there they are. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> They are, you're all siblings too, right? You're siblings. And that's, that is rare because usually our podcasts provide a, a sense of uh, enmity or separation amongst family members. <laughs> but we seem to have brought you together and that's weird. <laughs> you're weird. <laughs> you're and I think a lot of siblings listen to my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so when I say a woman's name, I want to, um, I, I, when I say a woman's name, we'll do the mimosas thing. Because what I thought would be really neat is there are a lot of women that have done some things in history. Did you know this? Yes, that's a lie. It's a lie. You, when I saw the article, I was like, this has to be from Fox News. <laughs> it can't be, or CMM, or NEM. But we, you've all, we've all heard of Ada Lovelace, right? No, yeah, no. Rosalind Franklin, no. Marie Curie, huh? Okay. Yeah. She was a baller. She also died because of. I was thinking radiation. of Marie Callender. Yeah. That's why I look the way I do. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact to know and share, we constantly, consistently make the top 50 podcasts on Marie Claire's magazine for pod, true crime podcasts. And it's weird. It's a women's magazine. And I take pride in that. And at one point, I was reading Marie Claire magazine and there was a top 10 sex tips for men. And... And I, I bookmarked it, but I think at the same time, I also bookmarked Marie Callender's. And so somewhere in the middle of that, like over the months, I started doing kind of foreplay things that were food related. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't work as well. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> this 
this is weird. Anyway. Did you our, just switch into your accent? I was trying to do it this whole time. <laughs> I'm trying to do it because everybody's like, it's gone. All right. So let's got them full. They, they didn't notice it at all. All right, here's one that here's one. I'll say the name and then you guys raise the roof, right? Rosalind Franklin. Yeah. So Rosalind Franklin contributed to the discovery of the structure of DNA. Do you know what DNA is? It's what half of you were like proven that you were the dad's baby or the mom's baby. It's a lot easier to confirm who the birth mother is, I've found. <laughs> Usually it's a question. I had questions. My wife was pregnant. I'm like, I'm still not convinced. <laughs> but turns out every time a lady's pregnant, they are the birth mom. Wow. Well, if some of you have talked to my mom, I'll tell you a quick story. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if some of you talk to my mom, this story is what I like to call a little bit Oprah a little bit Springer because my, my sister, and this is true. She, she could not bear children. She was like, Jesus is no, Jesus's mom could bear children. <laughs> she did it. She did it magically. So not like that at all. But my sister, my sister couldn't. And so years went by and it was annoying because she'd always talk about it and we were like oh my gosh and then finally one time my was your sister wanting a baby annoying yeah. you yeah <laughs> super annoying and this one time she's at the house and she's like can't have kids blah 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 again <laughs> and my mom is 52 and she says she says oh well i'll just have him for you and my mom was, my sister was like, what? And she's like, I'm just going to have the babies for you. Just throw it in here. And, <laughs> and so, believe it or not, at 52, my, my, 53, my mom went to a injection facility, I think, at like a, a, a gas station. <laughs> there was a turkey. The Walgreens. The Walgreens. <laughs> No, she went and got in, in, um, in vitro. You had in vitro? You didn't have sex with my sister's husband. <laughs> if you did, I need to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but no, but you, you magically got it magic. That's how it was all the way I grew up all the time, too. I didn't know about how things happened. But anyway, she cranked out. She she ended up getting pregnant for my for my sister. That sounds weird. And and had twins. At fifth, at so fifth. I've got a question. Okay. <laughs> are those twins? Are they boys or girls? Boy and a girl. Boy and a girl. Are is that boy and girl technically? Your brother and sister and niece and nephew. Holy crap, you just blew my <laughs> mind. Because <laughs> you're more Kentucky than I am, apparently. <laughs> and Mama, you're wild. Now I know why you didn't tell you turned down the tequila whenever they were trying to get to the... I don't know how many kids my hey. mom has. <laughs> no, but she produced two very beautiful, shiny kids. They were more shiny when they first came out. They kind of dabbed them off. <laughs> but they're now seven, 16, and they drive cars, and they can speak whole sentences. <laughs> it's nice. And here's what's weird. Here's what's weird about that. Is when you... Are we just now getting there? <laughs> <laughs> When you crank out kids for another person, even if you're just the mom and the babies are DN genetically, a la, here we're ready, raise the roof again. The, the, they are DNA based on the, the discoveries of Rosalind Franklin. Even if that's the case, 
and those babies are my sister and brother-in-laws, which just doesn't sound right. The judge is still involved two, like two weeks later, a month later, you have to, she has to give them up, even though they're not hers. She's literally like a renaissance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the judge is like, and then and they said, they said things like, are you sure you want to do this? Right? Are you sure you want to give up these children that aren't yours? Yeah, because my dad thought for sure she'd pull a fast one at the last minute and be like, I'm keeping them. <laughs> they looked weird, though. The boy had a long head and the girl was little and it was weird. My grandson, son. <laughs> Idaho didn't have the law. What law? When Tupper Matt, so it had to be adopted as if I was a staircase. Oh, I see. So the Idaho didn't, for you that couldn't hear, Idaho didn't have a law that separated the fact that she was the mother of the daughter. It, they just looked at her as the surrogate. And so she had to give them up just like every surrogate does. This went weird. I don't know. Anyway, Rosalind Franklin. My favorite Rosalind. I've always said that. Me too. Uh, she was a British chemist. And uh, she was born in 1920 in Notting Hill. Notting Hill, pretty near where you... I mean, it's in the right continent. It's in the continent. <laughs> where Bex was produced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, so in, in 1942, she brought her physics and chemistry expertise. This is boring, but it won't be. <laughs> It's not boring? Okay, okay. So she brought she brought her experience in chemistry and physics. By the way, back then, the ladies weren't really, the door wasn't like, come on in, ladies, for this. So she was busting down some doors, breaking some ceilings, crushing fallopian tubes all over the place, just to make sure that they knew that she deserved to be there. Um, and she... Um, she went to London Coal, where she investigated the properties of carbon, because where when you're at a coal plant, that's what you can find a lot of is carbon. Kent, are you are you tracking Kent? No. <laughs> she investigated the properties of carbon. Yes. Yes. So um, that was crucial to the war effort back then. So it was '42. So the war effort's going on, right? Um, and so uh, the war effort really relied on coal and carbon for strategic um, equipment like gas masks and stuff like that. And so um, and that was the basis of her PhD thesis. If, ever, if you have a PhD, you, you do a thesis to get your PhD. And for those of you that don't have PhDs, think of it like a really hard Mad Libs. <laughs> really long, really hard, okay? That's what she basically did. So in 1950, during her research, she discovered that there were two forms of DNA. This lady did. Without a man, she did this. Right? And she was, uh, she was white. Is that... Uh, <laughs> We were just excited to see you would yell that for that. I was, I was expecting the mom parade, was, but she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious to see what kind of reaction that would get. Um, oh, but shit. that there were two yeah. form that there were two forms of DNA, um, and uh, she op she was offered a three year scholarship because she figured out that there were two forms of DNA. Um, she deduced the basic dimensions of the DNA strands. And I don't know if you know how small DNA are, but um, if you think of the, the size of my self-esteem, <laughs> that smaller than that. So we have a lot to uh, attribute, uh, thank her for uh, Rosalind because she really cranked out some, some discoveries there. Uh, changing the face of DNA. And all of us can appreciate that because we've all been down that road. We're like, it's not mine. 
it's mine. Who's the killer? Well, we can now find the uncle or the aunt or some brother or sister because of familial DNA. That's part of the true crime thing. That's why that connect, that dot connected. Don't ever touch me again. <laughs> All right. So thank, so thank, thanks, thanks to her. Okay, this one's cool. This one's cool. You guys are gonna like this one. You ready to raise the roof Be for Beatrice Schilling? <laughs> Beatrice Schilling was a daredevil, motorcyclist, and engineer who saved fighter pilots' lives. I didn't even know that's a job. If I knew that was a job, I'm sure they would have called me. <laughs> But she was born in 1909 in Hampshire. Hampshire, is that, Bex, is that over on your continent? Hampshire? Hampshire. Yeah. Ah. Oh. oh, she just, she just did the thing to me. She did the thing. And that, and that hurt. Arguably an easier word to say than sower. <laughs> I instantly started adjusting my shirt when you did that. Okay, she was born in Hampshire. <laughs> she was an aeronautical engineer and a daredevil motorcycle racer. Beatrice Tilly Schilling is credited by her peers as helping the Allies to actually win World War II. Now, if you guys remember, World War II was the one that uh, came right before the one we're about to have. <laughs> so, get ready. Ladies, because you're going to probably be doing daredevil stuff soon. Or DNA stuff. Yeah, you might be spreading your DNA all over the place. Who knows? Who knows who's going to be in, tro in control over here? We might all be, you know, man, boy, women. Fluffing pillows and who knows what. <laughs> this is rough. She... She purchased her first motorcycle at age 14, and she later obtained a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering. She specialized in the elimination, the elimination of piston temperatures of high-speed diesel engines, ladies, right? I mean, where would we be without the dissipation of the high-speed piston dis... Right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 1941, she solved a problem that had jeopardized the lives of pilots. Uh, that would be that they kept getting venereal diseases. And she said, stop. <laughs> She's like, no, stop. That's rape. I thought it would be the hots. <laughs> <laughs> the heights? Yeah, the heights. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, does. Who said that? <laughs> Chlamydia twice, right here. <laughs> I've been clean for like 10 years, though, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Christmas. It just keeps it's like a coming dick around. Cold. It's like having a dick cold. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> um. So. Uh... Hey, mom operator. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. In 1940, <laughs> during, the, during the Battle of France, Mom, um, and Battle of Britain, Royal Air Force pilots discovered that there was a serious problem of stalling in the fighter, pi the fighter planes with Rolls-Royce engines. And then everybody in America just said, well, that's because they're not Chevys. And... <laughs> Uh, but Tilly led a small team that designed a simple device to solve the problem. It was a brass thimble with a hole in the middle of it, very similar to a condom with a hole in it. And in this case, it could be fitted easily into the engine's carburetor, like a fallopian tube, full circle. Well, that's, a, that's called a comeback. So... It remained. It remained in uh, in use. Oh Jesus! Bex, Bex. If France calls us and asks us where you are, we we need to know. We need to. We can't just say it was the spicy fries that got you. 
Um, so that that all through the wartime years, she she solved that problem. And so let's give it up for Beatrice Schilling. Yeah. All right. How about how about one? We'll do one more because this is kind of stupid. <clears throat> I feel, I, I feel, oh, oh, you got, oh. Do Eva Braun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My mom kept asking me to do that. It's kind of weird. No, this one, uh, this one's good. One second. Let me find it. I just have to scroll through my chat GPT here. Come on, AI. Don't let me down. All right, here we go. Nope, that's not it. Here we go. Okay, this gal's name, ready? Carolyn Herschel, yes. right? She's amazing, right? If you guys were wondering what she looks like, that's right. She looks like a potato that you left in the closet too long and it started getting angry. She, she may have been only a little over 1.2 meters tall, which in American freedom per inch is uh, about, about three, three back, three quarters of a back. Not a lot. Not, a, not a lot. <laughs> that is, and in England they just call it three backs, isn't it? Three backs, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she may. So she was not very tall, but as we all know, height is not a prequalifier for intelligence. Always. And what she lacked in stature, she more than made up for in her contribution to our understanding of space or spache, as they say. <laughs> no, they don't say it. They don't say spache. Do they say spache? I don't know. Somewhere they do. I'm calling it that from now on. Spache? Right. It sounds right. It feels right to me. <laughs> I like so, it. <laughs> so she was born in Germany and at the age of 22, which is an ill-advised caliber of gun to be carrying if you're doing self-defense, just so you know, don't do that. Carolyn joined her older brother, William, in the English city of Bath to train as a singer. Do you like Bath? Is it in a bar? <laughs> That's two. Bex, go home. Go, go to France. Go back to France. <laughs> bath, bath, bath. She trains as a singer, but it was soon astronomy that would become the focus of their lives. Similar to the the movie A Star Is Born. Do you guys see that one with Lady Gaga and the sniper? Bradley Cooper. Chris Kyle. Bradley if it was Cooper. Lady Gaga and a snopper, that would be a way different fucking movie. <laughs> Completely different More movie. More entertaining, that's right. Everybody would just be like, they'd be like, I just hope he shoots that schnoz off his face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she worked as an assistant to William. Uh, recording observations, helping him produce ever more accurate lenses to which the, the uh, they search the night sky. So telescopes and all that stuff. They were able, between the two of them, they were able to record around 2,500 new nebulae, nebula, nebula, and star clusters. Now, I know all you ladies are all about star clusters and nebula, but she's got you beat, 2,500. <laughs> All right. Um, she was the first woman to discover a comet. And that's crazy. Got any comet lovers in the house? <laughs> that's right. That's right. The only way to get the bathroom. The only time, that's what I was going to say. The only time it got that kind of a cheer was 1950 when they came out with the bathroom cleaner. And they were like, I. Betty Crocker and you know what would be Tom. really you know you guys know what would be really really funny to do right now. Jason, we need to f together figure out who is the drunkest person in this building. That that aside from me, that isn't a part of this group. Single them out and everybody just stare at them. <laughs> the entire room. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, don't do that. No, that let's was... not do that. <laughs> that one guy at the bar right there. <laughs> so we're... Hey, guy at the bar. <laughs> I think he's on FaceTime. Yeah, he's FaceTiming somebody. Never mind. We won't, we won't bother. Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> Did you say let's jump him? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll get in on the face. I don't know. You can airdrop him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's airdrop him a dex hit. <laughs> um, all right, just a couple more things. She was she was awarded by King, but who cares? Um, and uh, she was the first woman in the spatial industry to be paid for doing space stuff. And that's she got paid. She did, and that's what matters. Said <laughs> someone. <laughs> and those are some women from history. Uh, amen. <laughs> Next up, men from history. <laughs> What else are we doing? Um, I thought the next thing that we would do is, who's got the funnest venereal disease? We could talk. No, no. I'll start. <laughs> if, hey, listen. Hand if I'm raising raise. my hand, you need to be raising your hand. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had... We had my mom convinced for the last two days that we had a king bed in our room and that was it. And that I slept naked except for boots. Except for boots. And sometimes... Uh, and it was a PTSD thing. She's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until tonight. And I was like, Mom, we have queen beds. And she's like, oh, good. <laughs> Well, and I, is she just now figuring out that that's not the case? Yeah. Yeah, so she's learning with all you guys that that's not. So, welcome to reality. Oh, it's not hard to guess. I've been drinking tequila. <laughs> they didn't call me, oh, reach around for nothing. <laughs> And that's a comeback. I don't know. No, it's not a comeback. Not. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I was. I I've been the small spoon too many times. I'm tired of it. Which technically makes you a predator. <laughs> Apex predator. Apex predator. <laughs> that's right. I do. <laughs> um, I, I think we've got, do we have an interactive? We have a game, an interactive game. Again, it's called 911 something about 911. You guys get to interact with us about a 911 thing. So game. This, this game is called Call 911. And Kent and Op are going to read the cards. And they're not allowed to say the certain words on the card. I got to. I haven't even read the instructions yet, so. <laughs> These instructions. Okay, so they cannot say the words that are underlined on the card, and you guys are going to have to guess what they're saying. If you so guess. So you mean, like, so, touch each other to, like, guess? Yeah, no, no, I mean, you can just. <laughs> I really want to. It's no. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do Believe some hand, hand raising. Yeah, yeah. Okay, raise your hand. I there's. If you get it, you got a little prize. It's nothing great, but I got something <laughs> small. So. All right. Almost not a spoon. It yeah, is not really. a spoon. <laughs> you're on the right. You're hot. You're warm. You're on the right track. Can I just say one thing really quick? Just an observation. Like the group that we have is beautiful. Like if you look around, we've got. Men and women, a lot of white. I wasn't going to point it out, oh, but one. yet. I did another shot of tequila, and I have another one over there. You did another one? we all one? came from I some other continent, one. so that matters. That's all you. Oh, no, it's right there. But I've always thought that's cool. Is. I mean, we bring a lot of, like, you You guys You guys make a, a family in a really weird way. Kind of like my mom makes a family. She just <laughs> decides to, you know. Seriously, thank you guys for coming. It's really 
It's amazing. It's really amazing. Hey. That's what she said. All right. Okay. Thanks. Let's just cut it. You're right. There's a little prize. It's nothing great, but it's cute. I promise. It is a lock of both of our underwear. <laughs> I also promise it's not that because I wouldn't cut their underwear. That's why it's a lock of our back hair. <laughs> Intertwined, intertwined in a gorgeous knot. <laughs> in a heart. <laughs> All right, you you start. You go first. This is just charades with extra steps. Basically. So we're supposed to we we can't say the underlined words. Not say the underlined words. And you guys you guys have to guess the underlined words. You have to guess what he's calling nine one one house. So we'll say blank. Raise your hand. Turn to raise my hand. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is perfect. If you guys I'll start. I'll start. Is this okay. 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 All right. I'll start. I'll start. You ready? So I'm calling 911 and I say, blank started a blank about blank. That cunt started a fight about my cunt. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, <laughs> No. Um, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I think you have to use descriptive words. Oh, I have to use descriptive uh, words. Yeah. Right? She wins. <laughs> I, don't care. I think she wins. <laughs> you can't, All right. You can't descriptive leave a, descriptive yeah. words. Descriptive All right. words, but it can't be the word that's underlined. Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, someone that I used to know started a... Uh, Terrible job about someone I know more better than anybody in the world. Is this good? Yeah, I don't know what the card says. No, it's not. This was a this is a test round, so the card was my ex started a podcast about me. <laughs> Maybe we should okay. just read them. I, I, I okay. That, I wouldn't have. I don't know how this is gonna go. This is gonna be this is gonna be terrible. This is actually perfect. Okay. All right, go go. A Jeffrey Dahmer. Ooh. Yeah. Cannibal. Stole my two words. First one, Gwyneth Paltrow. Um. Um. Meatless. White bone. Vegan. Girl bone. Oh, Chase said it. That's the first word. So a cannibal stole my vegan. Second word. Mexican sandwich. Burrito. Burrito, burrito. burrito yeah. Oh, <laughs> a cannibal stole my vegan burrito. All right, so who got the I like that. So we'll we'll move. We move until they. Okay. I get it. Okay. Who got that one? I guess we all got. It. I don't know. Yeah, how do you count? You guys should probably find cards. Give me a stack of cards. I'm gonna go through these. So, hold on. Okay. I'm going through. I'll so this, so this one says, this one says a giant Venus flytrap is trying to eat my kitten. And I can't say Venus flytrap or kitten. So I have to give you guys. So I I would say a giant. I want to know the story of that one. That is, that's a big Venus flytrap. <laughs> Here, Sam, give me the stack that you have. Do these for now. You would have to, I would say with her. that he has. And you would say kitten. We're going to, we're going to dumb it down to two words. So okay. they'll, they'll have to guess two words instead of three. Okay. So Kent's got the two words right now. Okay. Oh, there's easier ones. Yeah, there's... I'm going to go through them. Because you guys are... Because you're not picking up on this. I'm <laughs> just kidding. The pilot guy. Hey. He's had all the answers back there. By the way, we have a pilot in our our midst. Hey. <laughs> and I would say probably batting a thousand because you're here. Do that one next. Right? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've never met a pilot that didn't have a perfect flying record. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't? Is that what you said? Oh, no. So he's very lucky. Yeah, I want to hear that story. <laughs> Why are we sitting up here? He probably can't say. It probably goes against, like, hippo violations or... 
Uh, hey! 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 Where's she at right now? Uh, uh, she needed to hear what Sam just taught. The story he just brought. Yeah. Sarah will tell you all about the story of powerful women and you will be inspired. That sounds like a nightmare I had. I know, but it's not super. Oh, no. Yep. It's still a <laughs> podcast, Mom. Come on, dude. Whatever we do is a podcast. We we do not right, some follow more. a format. Okay. You guys probably... Uh, there's a lot going on. Look okay. what this one has in it. <laughs> All right. Go ahead with that one. All right. We'll do a couple more of these. Go ahead. I am trapped in the one word box. It's somebody that close. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's actually the card. I'm trapped in a sewer with a. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How did you get there? Yeah, right? What happened? Happened. What's what happened in your life? <laughs> okay, this one. This one would be really hard to uh, to explain. I'm being. I I'm being, and then the word is. Boy, I could go two ways with this. Rainbow. <laughs> Pot positively hit in a. In a wait, in let a me see this sensual way. Oh, what? Poppy, <laughs> or you're hitting a child. Okay, yeah, that's creepy. That's creepy the way it's either as adults we're doing it positively, or you're hitting a child. That's scary. I'm being spanked by an human. <laughs> that's called an intrusive no. thought. <laughs> no one's calling 911 if that's yeah she was like firefighter <laughs> i'm being spanked by an human that you can't see an invisible man yeah invisible man who said invisible man And it and and I didn't specify gender, so you get it. You you get a thousand points. <laughs> Look at her. Yeah, and it has to start with <laughs> You have to pay a lot for that in some countries. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, anybody on Epstein Island is an invisible man. <laughs> <laughs> and it went there. Well, it went untouchable. <laughs> yeah. <right>. yeah. <clears throat> what do you got? <laughs> okay. A, two words. First one, little person. <laughs> they all go to midget. I don't have enough suit for that. Smart. Child. Child. Close. Toddler. Yes, baby. That's the first word. Oh, baby. How come two words. Midget. First word was baby. We've all been a baby. Somebody on this side have baby? No. No. That's what I was planning too. Second word, um, Boston Marathon. Boomer. What? Boomer, yeah. <laughs> oh god. I was gonna if it if Boston Marathon didn't work, I was gonna say Challenger, the Challenger. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. Everybody like laughed about Boston Marathon and then the Challenger, which happened in the eighties. <laughs> Everybody's like, I too soon. Too soon. I've only been forty years. <laughs> Did you get the rest of it? A baby boomer is having a fit at the two words. First one. Um, um, it's a color 
of the chair that I am sitting in. There Sweaty. you go. Second word, um, Grady Styles. What? Grady Styles. I did a TCK episode on a guy named Grady oh, Styles. Oh yeah. Red Lobster. Red Lobster. Yeah. Uh, I get a soup by myself. I get my. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> this one really hits close to home. <laughs> Mom, three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, your brother, nephew. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so accurate. How do you know me so well? All right. Uh, I've been. Um mysteriously the word is mysteriously moved oh, through God. time and space teleported, teleported. Uh, i've been teleported <laughs> now this one's going to this one's going to stretch your noodle to see if you know how well you know me i've been teleported to my home the us met my home my Antarctica. Free, free. Sorry. Okay. Yep. What? You get your own. I don't get a second suit. <laughs> I've been teleported to Antarctica. Oh. Our man was from Antarctica in the beginning. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> because my accent and my home were both left there. <laughs> Three words. The first one is a number. Oh my gosh, that's the first one that is a, is a number that is not one or three. He's in a pot. The second word. Right. Horns. Okay, third word. Um, some people would call Tom Brady this. Go. Go. So. Two horned goats are fighting inside a place where a two horned two goats. Horn goats are fighting inside a place where a one-legged person would work. <laughs> yes. Yes. I <laughs> that was so fast, Sarah. <laughs> so quick, Sarah. <laughs> this actually happens a lot in my church. A. A. <laughs> he, says, he says human sacrifice. What he doesn't know is how we pick them. <laughs> no. <laughs> the goat out in the shed. <laughs> Picks it. They lay all the babies out in the meadow, and the one that it sniffs is the one that goes into the grinder. No offense, Mom Parader. I don't mean to insult your culture. My I'm mom sorry. actually, oh, yeah. fun fact, my mom actually had three kids. One yeah. of them was... <laughs> and that's called tithing. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a really bad look from my mom, so... <laughs> You know what? None of you else have your moms here, and this is a lot of pressure. One for me. Oh, you know. <laughs> She's smarter than I am. She's not saying a word. She knows what's up. All right. A animal that is not a camel. Oh, good job. Llama. Who said llama? Damn. Somebody went with alpaca straight up. <laughs> I said llama, but somebody back there said before I did. A llama is attacking people at a carnival activity where you join my church. Religious swimming. Which is called? Baptism. baptism. Yeah. A llama is attacking people at a baptism. Which Marco happens. Polo for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Marco. Oh. <laughs> Let's do two more. Okay. The next one was actually said at my house once. 
Uh, my mom smashed my first word, um, white trash guitar. <laughs> Not a lot of people know this. Banjo was actually brought over by the slaves. It was originally called a banjore. That's true. <laughs> we kind of took that from them as well. Yeah. Um, my mom smashed my banjo on my two words. First one, somebody that you would assume from the state that I am from that a man would be attracted to. <laughs> Getting close. There you go. Hey, you got it. You're my sister. <laughs> oh, you're my sister. My mom smashed my banjo on my sister's. Hey. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 three six moth three six mafia i was getting some yeah yeah okay okay there it is uh all right this one's gonna be really easy for those of you that know kent <clears throat> i I taste. I taste a. Uh, Every a, a, rose has its thorn. <laughs> I was gonna say the band that Kent was conceived to. Oh. In the back of a Trans Am. Didn't have an engine in it either. <laughs> It had a bun in it pretty quick, though. It was my uh, grandfather's car. <laughs> was your he was in the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Recording. <laughs> oh, man. For my grandmother. <laughs> the hymns are just... <laughs> I so they could watch it together later. I, I taste poison in my what Kent drank out of his bottle as a baby. <laughs> I called it chunky milk. <laughs> you can also get it at IHOP for breakfast. There's two parts to it. There you go. Allie got it. Yay! <laughs> Somehow transport her gift through your phone. Just airdrop it to her. Oh yeah, who had poison? Who said poison? I don't. We'll figure. Well, I think that does it for this. I think one. that does it for this game. Thank you all for coming. And uh, if I convinced anyone to get baptized, see me later. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's do this. There's a there's a pool at the at the hotel, and so if anybody's interested in getting a timeshare condo, <laughs> we're having another meeting at the. <laughs> hey, fun fact: raise your hand if you're in the Marriott. Have you looked in the drawer yet? There's a Gideon and a Book of Mormon. Are you no way? So read up, children. Read up. <laughs> we'll discuss later. That's too we'll good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for being here, though. Thank you. I did just find out yesterday that Mormonism is just Christianity with a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. That's, I never thought of it that way. It's like Rocky II. <laughs> I did not know that until yesterday, so. Jaws, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a bigger arc. <laughs> uh, and that's it. That's all we got. That's our rhyme. <laughs>